Hi, this is Sean. In this video, I'm gonna go over blueprint splines, and I'm gonna show how I made this scene using simply four blueprint splines that are uh, pretty plug and play. Um, specifically, some of the goals for this tutorial are going to be breaking down larger blueprint pieces of code into chunks, and then specifically getting into uh, developing a spline with discrete objects, spe setting specific intervals, randomizations, and then uh, setting up a different spline, uh, a spline mesh, so that we can build a road and uh, set up, talk about the tangents and setting collisions. And then finally, I'm going to go over, uh, just quickly, I'm going to paste in the notes after, um, after this goes up onto YouTube, the uh, content examples link and also the landscape splines link. And then finally, I'll sort of add chunks below uh, hyperlinks below so you can skip to different parts of the video. All right, so let's get started. Um, so basically you can see we've got what looks sort of like a bridge with a bunch of rocks on the side and sort of a fence. And I did that with just uh, three separate splines. I'm going to turn game mode back on. I'm going to drag one of these splines out into the world here. And what we will get is uh, a spline, which then we can drag, uh, start in an endpoint or hold the Alt key down. And when we hold the Alt key down, we'll add additional spline points. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key. So, and then within that spline, we will set it up um, modifiers so we can increase the spacing between the rocks. We could also modify the random scale and maybe some additional like r random rotation. We can add even more randomization. So like right now, this is sort of a max rotation randomization, but we could add a minimum rotation as well. So let's jump in and get started. I made a new folder and I'm going to add a new blueprint class in that folder called, uh, we'll call it spline demo one and we're gonna make this demo something where it'll be discrete objects like these rocks along the spline so let's open that up and we're going to first add a spline we can leave that called spline i'm going to add a couple of variables that we're going to need for this uh, the main variable is the space between objects so we can call that space or spacing spacing make that a float then we're going to need some random variables also I'm going to make this variable uh, public and call this space between objects and we can compile this we, the rock is we could probably safely say that at least a starting distance of 150 between rocks is a good idea so let's try that Let's add some random, uh, we'll add random rotation, and we'll also do random scale. And then also we will do a random stream. And the random stream variable type, what that allow, will allow us to do is it'll allow us to create randomness uh, that has, it's a repeatable randomness. And we'll, I'll explain it a little bit more as we go. So we've got the variables that we're going to need for our basic spline layout. And then we're going to do all of our work inside the construction script. This is essentially compiled before runtime, um, whereas the event graph is listening or looking for events. So the main starting chunk is a loop where we're adding the meshes and setting them up. So let's do that. So a for loop. And then we'll add a mesh, a static mesh component. And then we will set a mesh. And finally, we're going to set the texture or the, the material. OK, great. And then we need to connect the mesh that we're going to add and 
connect it to the static mesh and the material. We'll choose the rock and we'll set the material to that rock material. Okay, so that's a start. We can comment that if we want. Select these nodes, hit C, um, loop, and set meshes. All right, so then the next part will be using the spline to calculate the distance of that spline of the spline that we've got in the in the level and then divide how many using our spacing how many times we should loop through and put more meshes down so we're going to use this uh, we're going to get the length of the spline get the length of the spline and then after we get the length of the spline we're going to divide that spline so with the whole and remainder and we're going to divide by uh, the spacing that we define. So, and that's going to give us a value of how many times we're going to loop through and add uh, additional rocks onto our onto our spline. <clears throat> we need to set the first index. Usually, the default is zero. So, now we've got that. We can say um, spline math basics or just divide and once we've got that now we're gonna find out where along that spline we're gonna place those objects so we're gonna need the spline variable again we're gonna get the distance and location of the spline so the location at distance along spline and uh, we can set this to local or world. We can explain that in a little bit. I'm going to, in order for the distance, we're going to take the spacing again, and I'm going to multiply that times the index. So we'll say multiply, and that's an integer times a float. And that will be, so basically, it's how far along we are is going to be calculated by one spacing unit times how many times we've gone through that loop. And then we're going to set, um, we're going to we're going to add the transform or make the transform make transform there we go so the make transform will give us several inputs the location which is a, a vector and we've got a rotation and a scale and the output of that is going to plug into where we add the static meshes so we can try it right now so we've got our spline demo drag that into um, our scene. Well, one thing that we probably want to set is this manual attachment, attachment and recompile. That will snap the starting point of the rock to the head of the spline. But as you can see right now, every 150 units we've got a rock and we can change that variable to a higher number so we get less rocks and continue to drag that spline point out and hold the alt key down and add more rocks that's great so let's add a little bit more complexity to this uh, initial um, output we want to add some randomization to the rotation and scale so uh, let's add drag down uh, control drag our random rotation and control drag our random stream we'll say uh, random in range from stream and so the random rotation will say the minimum would be maybe a minus 15 degrees and a maximum of 15 degrees. So it's plus or minus 15 degrees rotation. Oops. Next, if I want a random float and range. And so now let's do minus 15 to positive 15 
and then we will make the rotate. Make rotator, and we could do it on one or more axes, or we could set even multiple separate randomizations. But for this example, I'm just gonna leave it on the Y axis, and we'll connect that up to rotation. Now let's just do a similar thing for scale. So pretty much we can copy these two nodes, except for scale is between, uh, we'll do like a 0.9 scale, so like 90% of the, of the scale to something like 110% maybe. So 1.1. And we can plug that into scale just for simplicity's sake. So we could also make these variables um, public so that we can modify them. And we can already see from this that we're already getting some results. Like the rocks are already rotating randomly um, 40 degrees. So if we, we could even do a separate variable for um, the min if we wanted to control over that. So now we're doing minus 45 to plus 45 randomization. And now we could like crank up the random scale to 1.4, 1.5, and um, also maybe make it go to like 0.8. All right, awesome. 